Hola, it's me, Trashkin. Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, my name's Slash, I'm the world champion of Pokemon Unite, um, widely known as the best defender in the world. Today we're going to be starting a new series where I go over all the defender and supports. Um, and I'm going to be going over other Pokemon too, but we're going to start with the defenders and supports. Um, I'm going to start with the best to the worst. Um, so today we're going to be covering Mime. Mime isn't necessarily the best in 5 stacks in competitive, but in solo queue it is definitely the best defender. You can demolish people in solo queue with this. I'm going to be showing you guys my build before we hop into the game. Um, so this is what you want to run in 5 stacks. However, today, since we're going to be playing solo queue, um, I'm going to be playing special attack specs, focus band, and EXP share. Um, and I'm going to be running it with potion, and I'm going to be using this emblem. Here's the emblem build. It's pretty simple. Just six green, six white. Build as much HP as you can. And yeah, let's hop right into the games. Um, I'm currently not top 100 on the leaderboard, um, but that's because if I was, we wouldn't be able to get any games for you guys. And I do want to try recording these games on my main account, um, which if I was like top 10, which I usually am, um, the queues would take like 5-10 minutes and we'd be on pin. So I'm going to try to get a game here. It's probably going to take a while still, um, but I'll be right back once we get a game. Alright, so that actually was only a minute queue. Very good for us. Um, so that's actually really surprising. Uh, I'm going to be picking Mime. Make sure to click which path you go in. Um, that actually really helps you with randoms. Like for example, if I'm really trying to win, I'll try to go jungle. Um, so I usually mark that. Um, we're gonna go put potion on here and we have our emblem build that I showed you guys earlier. Um, let's see what we have here. So we have another Slowbro. So we actually have two tanks, which is huge. Um, we have Glaceon, we have Dodrio, and we have Scyther or Scissor. So this is already looking like a pretty promising team comp, to be honest. Um, hopefully our randoms do well, although I don't have high expectations for them. Um, before we get into the game, I want to explain the EXP share. So EXP share is actually the best item in the game by far. Um, you might think, should I really run this in solo queue? If I'm going to be like the highest level, is it really worth it? Um, but yes, I do think it is. Um, especially if your team doesn't have a tanker support. So this game, we have a slow bro, so I could technically hope that they run EXP share and I don't have to. Um, but to be safe, we're going to run EXP share, and even if we have two EXP shares, it's fine. So we see here the slow bro does not have EXP share, so I'm glad that I ran it. Um, and EXP share is a great item in solo queue now, because they actually recently changed it um, to where if you get farm near an ally Pokemon, they get all the EXP. Um, so you can see this guy's already level 3 even though I shared XP with him. Even though I'm getting the last hit, he's getting all the EXP. Um, so again, EXP share one of the best items right now. Um, we're going to match this Charmander first and just secure this farm. Um, it's not that good to let the Zork get stacks. We managed to get that. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Um, because we are stacking and our Scyther got stacks too. Um, so we're actually pretty chilling. So this middle Adino is going to spawn at 9.15. I'm going to make sure to position for it. Make sure I get, we call this a pull. And I'm just going to secure that there. Um, the Zoric went like up here. Um, so I'm just going to score because he's not here to defend the pad. I won't take much damage. And even if I do take damage, I have potion right there to heal it all back up. And we're just going to take a berry before B spawn here. Even though I'm close to full health, it's better to just... Be full health, just in case something happened. Okay, looks like we got all of the bees. Um, you can tell because the Zork has only two points above him. So if he got the big bee, he would have had four points above him at least. And because our jungler's here, we're going to be able to kill him pretty easily. However, their jungler ganked top and did the same thing. So we are not winning the game, even if we are winning lane. Just keep that in mind, and this is still going to be a hard game, because we still have a level 3 Eevee, as you can see here, um, so it is not the best. Um, however, our Scyther is getting pretty fed, and he's getting all his stacks in, so that is really good for us. Scyther is probably like the best Pokemon in the game. Let me see if I can help him out here. Um, looks like the Zork did not try to go to score. 
Um, we managed to get him here. And I'm gonna be going Power Swap. Power Swap is really good in solo queue, either for enemies, to kill enemies, or to like help your teammates. It's just really good. Gives movement speed damage and damage reduction. One of the best abilities in the game. Um, you can go Barrier, the other move. It is still really good, so keep that in mind. Looks like the Sylveon is Calm Mind Hyper Voice. That's a really interesting set. Most solo queue Sylveons tend to not go that set. We still have focus here, so maybe we can make something happen. Uh, we did kill the Cinder, so even if we die now, it's pretty good. I managed to juke out the Dragonair, and if I got that confusion off, I think he dies and I live. Um, but still, that's a really good trade for us. Their Cinder was level 8. I was only like level 6. Um, now I'm almost level 8 off that kill. Um, and we don't care that much about the Dragonair getting the kill. Looks like our Dodrio did int though, so that's really bad. And our Scyther is dead too, and now they have a Dragonite. So now we are in a pretty bad spot. I do manage to steal that farm. Stealing farm is very important, so try to do that. We're going to try to steal this, but they have a Dragonite, widely considered the best secure in the game, so it's going to be pretty hard, yep. Um, and the Dragonite times it well, so not much we can do there. We can time our CC with this Dodrio and get all the kills though. Um, so it's not the end of the world. Um, Regice is the worst out of the three Regis that can spawn, because there's three different Regis that can spawn. So really, we're chilling right now. Um, so hopefully my randoms defend this top goal zone. I'm going to scout out mid right now to see where the enemy team goes. Um, it looks like they're not pushing the top one. So I can just stay in mid, see if they want to go bot. I want to defend this goal zone right here. Um, and our Dodrio is doing a really good job of chunking them actually. So I can just unite right here because um, my unite is a really short cooldown and this Dragonite is a lot of EXP. Um, and now we're going to try to score bot. Um, it's probably risky, I might die for it. Um, looks like it's just a Charizard here though, so we're chilling. Um, I could have stolen that blue if I was more on top of it. Do miss my guard swap, which is really bad. Um, but we're going to be able to get out. Looks like there's three pushing bot. My Scyther should be able to get a lot of kills here. I do land the guard swap so I can kill the Zoric pretty easily. There we see the Zoric United. This is important to keep track of. So, their Zoric used Unite, which is really good. He doesn't have Unite anymore. And he's not going to have it for a long time. The objectives spawn every two minutes. We took them around a minute ago, which means this Zoric is not going to have Unite for this objective or even the top objective. Um, he might have it in time for the top objective if he really farms hard, but it's going to be tough. Um, it looks like uh, there's two people pushing bot, so I'm going to go help him with the jump pad that spawns at five minutes. I was just waiting for that. Um, looks like he's going to let them get the scores in. Very interesting. Um, again, don't expect too much out of your randoms. Um, I do want to play safe here a bit because I have Unite coming up in 90%. So I want to fight when that comes up. Uh, looks like I might die before it comes up though. Um, yeah, probably should have kited out when we saw the Dragonite Unite. Um, we do pick up two kills though, so it's really good. So here, um, I'm probably going to be going for the top objective again. The bottom objectives are really good if you're playing with like a 5 stack that knows what they're doing. But in solo queue, these top objectives are actually tend to be more important. So um, if you even it out, I'd say it's probably like a 50-50 on which one you should go for every time. Looks like the Dragonite is on it, so I'm going to be helping my Glaceon out here. Um, we're, we don't have to unite yet. Um, I'm probably going to guard swap the Cinder here. I did miss though, um, but we're just going to unite her after. Oh, uh, the Zorix here, so I am dead. But we got two kills there, which is huge. Um, they used the Zorix and Charizard Unite, and we still managed to get the Reggie. So that is really good for us. Um, the Scyther lives. I thought he was going to die there, so that's really good. Um, it's going to be hard to push this in, but we are chilling on EXP. And we're doing decently on points. We're not that much ahead, but it's not the end of the world. Usually the Ray fight is what determines most solo queue games. So as long as you're not like 300 points behind, um, whoever gets the Rayquaza will typically win. Um, especially when you're playing someone like Mime that can solo these objectives. I'd be a lot more worried about points if I was playing someone, like say, say a defender like Blissey that can't solo the Rayquaza. So if we needed to do the Rayquaza, 
um, and my teammates weren't doing it, we'd be in a really bad spot. Um, but since I'm playing Mime, um, I can always just do the Rayquaza on my own. I'd be able to do that really easily. So that's why I'm not too worried about points. Um, we are like ahead, I want to say like 50 points, but they've scored a lot on our tier 1 here, so I'm actually not sure how ahead we are. And we're, we should be able to stop the Cinder score, let's see. Oh, you actually were not able to stop. And for some reason, someone on my team wants to surrender. Looks like it's because two people died. Um, they are going to be chasing me a bit here. Let's see if they go for this bottom objective. There is no top objective. If they do go for this, I can maybe unite them, try to steal it. Um, another great thing about Mime is he has great secure. Looks like they are ripping it. Okay, we did manage to steal it there. Uh, I'm going to try to help my Scyther here. And looks like we're about to pull off like a 2v5. Not quite, but even if I die here, um, we managed to accomplish what we wanted. They're all 1 HP. We killed a couple. Um, looks like our Glaceon did int though. So we just need our Slowbro to go to the center and we'll be fine. Um, let's see if he heads on over. Looks like he is passing towards there. And they're not hitting Rayquaza, which is great. Because our Slowbro scored top during that, so we're ahead in points. They used a lot of Unite moves, so um, looks like they are ripping now. So we do have to be careful of that because they have Dragonite. Looks like our teammates are there in time to fight and get them off the objective. I managed to hit my Guard Swap on the Dragonite, which is huge. Okay. Um, so now it's three dead. My team is hitting it. Um, it is a bit worrying, we don't have to do the Rayquaza right now, but this is what randoms tend to do. And right now I'm just going to try to save my secure. I'm going to get ready to secure it, looks like the Glaceon got it, so... I did time my secure a bit late, um, but luckily, our randoms were not that bad this game, so... I um, managed to pull out a win. Um, and yeah, this build is amazing for solo queue, you can see I'm level 14 by the end of the game. Um, could potentially hit level 15 here, so... You're playing a defender, but Mime is like one of those defender supports that can be a carry. Like you're not necessarily a defender. And you can see here, like you're going to see in the stats, we did so much damage. Did so much for the team as well with this guard swap. It is like one of the best um, ally abilities. Um, it really helps out your teammates when you have it connected to them. Um, so like, um, and we're running EXP share. So again, EXP share is a great item. This build is great. Um, we had six stacks, I think like halfway through the game, so already doing really good. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's check out the stats here. I always love looking at the stats after a game. So, 788 to 186, the Dodrio got MVP. Looks like I was only four points behind him. The Sylveon actually got the second highest on the team. Um, our Scyther actually didn't do that well. Let's see, their highest was 78. Um, so we scored way higher than their highest. Let's look at the damage. So I actually out damaged our Glaceon as the support running EXP share. So you can see how broken Mime is there. Um, I've had games where I do like 120k on Mime. So um, that game they had like fairly squishy Pokemon and we didn't fight that much. So that's why the damage is not as high. You can see I tanked 71k and I only died like one or two times. Um, so that just shows how tanky Mime is. Look at the healing, 40k healing. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Try out this build, it's an amazing build. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'll probably do Sableye or Blissey for the next one. Um, yeah, we'll see.